Okay, hi everyone. I'm Carmen Lopez, Director of College Horizons. Welcome to this webinar. Um, we're gonna start in just a moment, but I just wanted to show you my face real quick before we go into the slides. Um, I've got a poster up of Dartmouth College who will be hosting us in 2014. And hopefully you have also pulled from our website, our College Horizons flyer. Um, and then for those that might be listening that are working with college students or if you yourself are interested in going back to graduate or professional school, even though this webinar is not about Graduate Horizons, you might be seeing this um, flyer that talks about the graduate program that will be held at Cornell University. Okay, Hillary. Hi everyone, my name is Hillary Abe. I'm the coordinator of recruitment and alumni affairs for College Horizons. It's good to see you all here. I'll be here in the background manning the technology side. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stick them up and I will be moderating the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So enjoy. Okay, thanks. All right, let's start. Okay, Hillary, can you see that? Yes. All right, here's our cover page. Dartmouth College will host um, our 2014 CH program um, June 28th through July 3rd. And that is a Saturday to Thursday program. That's a little bit different than in the past. So make sure you note those dates, a Saturday through a Thursday. Oops. Uh, we're going to go over uh, the presentation, how to participate in the webinar, part one, why attend College Horizons, part two, how do I apply for College Horizons, uh, questions and answers, um, and you can also submit questions. And then we also pull together a list of frequently asked questions that we often get in the application process. Okay, uh, today we are recording um, this webinar. It'll be available for download. Um, I'm trying to be quick with this and uh, do it within a 30 minute window um, just so that it's easier to watch again. Uh, the question panel, um, again, you can submit information there. All attendees are in mute only. Um, and if you're experiencing any technical difficulties, again, use that uh, question box and Hillary will help you. Okay, so what is College Horizons? Uh, our organization is a nonprofit. Our mission is to facilitate the education of Native students and youth. Each summer we offer an admission work workshop that helps um, Native American, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian high school students. Um, and our programs are held on a different college campus each year. So we're what's called a college access organization and we provide pre-college admissions, financial aid, and then we also talk about how to transition to college and be a, su a successful Native student in college in particular. Again, the Graduate Horizons program is a pre-graduate workshop for current college students and college graduates who want to go on to professional and graduate school. And that's the second program that we're offering. Okay, so why attend College Horizons? Here are some of the things that you're going to learn um, in our one-week workshop. Um, for students, how do I even think about and pick a college? How do I know what's the right match? How can my family and I pay for college? What should I be doing right, na right now as a 10th grader, 11th grader, and even if we have some middle school students on this webinar, that's great. What is it that you could be doing to prepare for college? Uh, what schools will care about my need as a native student? Some of us have unique things that need to be addressed when we go off to college. So finding that right fit is just as important. Do I go out of state? Do I stay in state? What does it mean between private versus public? Where will I be happy? What programs are important to me? And then how can I be competitive in the application process? And how can I find other Native students or Native Studies classes? 
a snapshot of the college application process. So there's lots of steps to applying to college. So there's the basic information on the application, which could be the Common App, the Universal App, or that college's own application. Uh, there's application fees or fee waivers that you would need to secure. You've got to submit your official transcripts and submit your GPA with that. There might be certain academic requirements that colleges require. Maybe you have to have one year of language. Maybe you have to have two years of science labs. Uh, maybe some schools might actually require um, arts in your um, classwork to to qualify um, for their program. So you have to know academic requirements. Um, what extracurricular activities and accomplishments are you, you involved in that you can write about on your application? You're going to have to secure one or two teachers uh, recommendation. Your counselor has to also submit a letter of recommendation. And then generally you're going to have to provide a personal essay um, or short answer um, um, questions for supplements to the application. Uh, and for us at College Horizons, that essay is critical. We work uh, and do draft after draft on that essay. Uh, for your application process, you're going to have to take one of the um, standardized tests, either the SAT or the ACT. There are fees involved with that. You've got to register at certain times. And some schools might require SAT2 subject tests. Then another aspect of applying to college is completing the free application for federal student aid or the CSS profile, another type of form um, for financial aid. Um, and then the colleges might require other supplemental information that you have to follow up on. So there's lots of pieces to the application. You can't just pull this off in a couple of days at Christmas break. Um, it takes time because you've got to get information from other people, um, including your parents, particularly around the taxes. So at College Horizons, we walk you through every step and run you through it so that you um, come back uh, into your senior year or your junior year with a polished draft of everything and so that you understand what those steps are. In our program, you're going to um, select and research uh, 10 colleges to apply to. You're going to edit and complete a polished common application. Uh, you're going to write memorable college essays that really show who you are. It captures your voice, your story. Uh, we're going to give you some test taking strategies. The Princeton Review Foundation, uh, Jay Rosner, comes in to do test prep, as well as the College Board. Uh, you're going to learn to navigate financial aid. Uh, we're going to have your parents complete a preliminary FAFSA so that we can calculate that EFC, expected family contribution. That will let you know how much am I going to potentially have to pay for college? What is uh, expected of my parents? What's expected of me? We're going to have you look at actual financial aid award letters so that you can compare them. We're going to help you determine what types of scholarships or aid you will be eligible to apply for. And the American Indian Graduate Center's Gates Millennium Scholarship, um, their staff participate in our program. They partner with us and um, they do a workshop, a presentation on how to apply to the GMS. Uh, students will also attend a campus tour and a college fair. You'll also attend six to seven college informational sessions. You're going to learn um, one really great part of our program is really understanding what is it like to be a native student in college. Um, we have our interns talk about that, the host program, which this year with Dartmouth, they have a very strong native student um, program there. So we're going to have um, students, alumni of ours that are at Dartmouth that will be participating. And you're going to hear directly from them about what it's like to transition. Um, what are the challenges, but then how did they overcome those challenges? So we're going to get real with you on what to expect in college. Um, and then you're going to develop relationships with college and mission officers and expert counselors, you get to work one-on-one -on -one with these folks to polish your application 
before you actually even apply to college. And then I think the best part, of course, is meeting and connecting with a hundred other Native youth from around the country who all want to go to college. And it's important to surround yourself with people, students, peers that have that same drive, especially if you feel like sometimes you don't have anyone to talk to about really going on to, co uh, on to college. And sometimes it may not be as discussed in your own family. Um, achievements. Uh, we're really proud of our alumni. Over two, uh, 2,200 students have attended College Horizons and about 550 have attended Graduate Horizons. Uh, students in our program, 99% uh, of our alumni go on to college, 95% typically to four-year institutions, and about a third of those go to very selective institutions. Uh, we're proud of our college graduation rates. About 85% of our alumni graduate college within five years. Um, our scholars, uh, partnering with the Gates Millennium Scholars, we average about 10 to 15 of our alumni are actually named GMS scholars. And then a quick demographic um, snapshot of this past year's 2013 cohort, 54 tribal nations represented as well as Alaska Native and Native Hawaiians. 57% lived on or within 60 miles of their homelands, villages, reservations, or islands. Um, 24 states were represented, 92 different high schools on the mainland, and 21 different schools in Hawaii. 56% um, of our students are first generation, meaning um, their parents do not have a bachelor's degree. 33% of our students are male. And then 16% of the kids in our program never flow, had flown on an airplane. 61% had never stayed overnight on a college campus. Our perks. So this is just six days. So when you're thinking about um, going away from home, particularly for those that have never flown, you might get a little anxious thinking about that. But it's only six days and we're going to pack a lot in there. You're going to experience a college life, the college environment, dorms, the food, the local restaurants, the athletic facilities. Um, you, we want you to see and picture yourself on a college campus. Um, we're going to help you understand the college application before you begin the busiest time of your year, uh, senior year. Um, you're going to make great friends with similar goals and passions. And again, that's really important for young people to have that peer-to-peer -peer connection about going on to college. You're going to have great lasting relationships with admission um, counselors um, as well as our college counselors that will stay in touch with you after the program. And then, of course, we want you to visit a different area of the country and I don't know how many of you have been to um, Little Hanover, New Hampshire, but I, I should disclose that Dartmouth College is um, the college that I attended so it's going to be great for me to return and Hanover is a little college um, or I'm sorry a little town in the middle of nowhere but it's a beautiful town and so for you to experience that um, is really important. Okay, let's get to it. Applying to College Horizons. All right, this is what you need to do. First, again, Dartmouth is hosting us June 28th to July 3rd, a Saturday through Thursday uh, in Hanover, New Hampshire. Thank you to Dartmouth College for hosting us. All right, how do I apply? So you're going to go to our website and you're going to click on the apply button, okay? All right, the apply tab, and that's going to then take you to a registration page. You're going to fill out uh, and submit information, and then um, you will click to download the application. The application will be downloaded right onto uh, the download folder. It will not be emailed to you, so you've got to check your download folder. Eligibility. Um, a student must be American Indian, Alaska Native, or Native Hawaiian and provide the appropriate tribal ancestry uh, documentation. So that might be your tribal enrollment forms. Um, we take either from state or federally recognized tribes 
or uh, for Hawaiians, your verified Hawaiian ancestry documentation, such as required by Kamehameha schools or from the Ho'ulu Hawaiian Data Center, you can also contact the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Uh, for Hawaiian students, this is really important because later for you to register for specific scholarships, you're going to have to have this documentation as well. So yes, you do need to be an enrolled tribal member. You have to be a current 10th or 11th grade high school student. You need to have a 3.0 minimum grade point average in core academic courses, not your electives. And you need to be a, per, a permanent resident, um, a current or permanent resident of the United States. And this year, sorry, no CH alumni can apply uh, to the program because we have limited space. There's only one program that's going to be offered by Dartmouth. Okay, the cost to attend. The total uh, program cost is $225, and that's your tuition uh, cost for room, meals, ground transportation, and all the materials. Uh, students are also, also responsible to purchase their own airfare. Most of you are going to fly to Hanover. Maybe we'll have some East Coasters that will drive up. But students are responsible for their own transportation. The actual cost per student is $2,000. So we're subsidizing by fundraising um, to be able to support you to come to the program. And we're asking you to pay $225 towards that $2,000 cost. Now, 225 could be um, difficult for some families and for some students. We do have financial aid. Scholarships are available for both tuition and airfare travel assistance. And generally, 50% of our students receive one or both. Um, and it's determined automatically because you have to have your parents' financial uh, tax information with the application. Okay, so there is uh, travel and tuition support. Last year we gave out just about uh, over $40,000 to support students to come to the program. Uh, an important thing, if a student receives a travel scholarship from, a, from us and is a no-show or drops out um, um, either before the program or doesn't show up for the program, then we do need to have the family uh, pay for that lost ticket because we can't um, we can't use the ticket anymore once it's put in the student's name. So that is one of the scholarship uh, criteria. Okay, things to remember when you're applying. Okay, students and parents, ensure that the email addresses that you provide are correct and current. We're initially going to be contacting you by email um, and and by the cell phone numbers. That's the other one that often changes our cell phone numbers. So during the application process, um, we're going to be calling you if we miss anything or we're going to be emailing you. Later on in the process, when we uh, begin to purchase the airfare tickets, it's really important that we have the most accurate email addresses because all of the tickets are e-tickets. Okay, fill out the information accurately. Incomplete applications will be considered late. I'll talk a little bit more about that. You have to mail all components of the application in one packet. This ensures that all pieces of the application do not get lost. Um, we're also trying to train you that you're going to have to do this um, in the coming years when you do apply to, to college. So get everything together. Um, and then mail it all in one packet. You need to keep a copy of the application for your own records, so in case anything gets lost in the mail. And you can always contact us before the deadline by phone or email if you have any questions. And then, as I was saying, the, co uh, the, the College Horizons application intentionally mirrors the college application process. We want students to understand all of these pieces that they're going to have to get together for us is the same type of thing that they're going to have to get together for their application to college. That is also then helping parents to understand why are we getting all of this material together for this program. It's because parents, we're running you through the same process as well. Okay. So now, what kind of students are we looking for? How are we evaluating students to come to our program? 
Our selection process is comprehensive and objective. I, um, as the director of the program, I make the final decision on the read. So um, if there's ever any concern or issues, um, I made the final call. So what am I looking for? What are the readers looking for? We're lo looking for academic achievement. We're evaluating your transcripts. Um, and that also includes the letters of recommendation from the teachers and the counselors. They're gonna give us insight into the kind of student you are. What kind of learner are you? Are you curious about things? Um, are you um, the kind of student that speaks out in class or are you quiet but when you do say something it's pretty profound or do you express yourself mostly through writing? Um, so we want to know what kind of student you are and then we want to know what kind of person you are according to your teacher and your counselor um, and this can be about character, hardship that you or your family um, are experiencing and some of those could be around learning styles and learning differences as well. Um, they might talk about some notable achievements and then your involvement in the Native community. So letters of recommendation are giving us insight to who you are as both a student and a person. Um, attendance is really important to me. Your tardies and your absences. I was shocked at last year's applications um, where I was seeing 15, 20, 30 um, tardies um, to school and that's going to be a big flag on your college application as well so this is critical for me so if any of you are um, having trouble with that uh, you need to start to get organized um, because that's one criteria that I'm looking at on our applications. Uh, then we're also looking at your extracurricular activities. What are you involved in outside of um, school and whether that's extracurricular um, activities through the school, through your community, church, uh, culturally or at home. So that can span lots of things. And then we want to know about your involvement with your native culture and community. And this can be very vast for our College Horizon students. Um, some um, some have a lot of involvement in terms of living right on reservations, homelands, in pueblos and villages, to those students that live far away from their community but maintain um, cultural and community connections. So there's a very broad range in terms of the College Horizon students around this. Um, and then general diversity. I'm interested in gender. Um, we only get 33% um, of boys to come to the program. So I am interested in supporting boys, for example. Um, schools, um, there are some schools that we get a lot of applicants from. So if I get a student from a school that we don't receive many applicants from, I'm interested. Um, I'm interested in that that school diversity, tribal nation diversity, um, first generation if a student um, might have uh, parents who haven't gone on to uh, get a degree, the state you're from, and there's lots of other things including maybe even if you're the, the oldest child in your family and um, you've got several siblings um, that are younger than you. To me, I'm looking at that because I'm interested to, to see that you might be paving a, a way for them within your own family dynamics. So there's lots of things around diversity. And then most importantly, I'm interested in your story, your ohana. Tell me about yourself. What, what kind of person are you? What are you passionate about? Um, what are your hopes and your dreams? What are your fears? Um, what do you not like that's going on in your community, in your school, at home? Um, and why do you think college might help you um, to be able to deal with some of those challenges? So your story is very important in, in the process. Um, 2014, it's going to be competitive. I have to be honest with you. Um, this year we've only got 100 seats available, so um, put your best foot forward and that doesn't always mean every kid who has a 4.0 GPA is going to automatically get admitted over a student with a 3.5 or a 3.2. We have a vast range, so um, if, if you want this, you've got to go for it. Um, the other thing that's important is that this is deadline specific. Um, we're going to reward students who apply on time. So that February 4 postmark deadline is important. Okay. All right. So into the dates and the deadlines. 
All right, applications must be postmarked by February 4, 2014. There's only one deadline to apply. Late applications will still be received and they'll essentially be placed at the end of the line and reviewed once the first, um, the on time and completed applications have been reviewed. Um, other important dates, just in terms of the process, by March 3rd, we're going to email out the decision letters and mail out the decision letters. March 15th will be the deadline for students to confirm program attendance and pay um, the balance of the tuition. April 15th is when students have to purchase their airline tickets, and that's also the date um, that students will um, be, be well, that students can withdraw from the program and you can receive a refund um, of your deposit only if a, another student can take your place. So when we make decisions by that March 3rd, you can either be admitted or waitlisted and waitlisted for different reasons. Sometimes it might be an incomplete application. Sometimes it could be we want to see your new grades, your updated grades. Um, or the other wait list is that we just um, don't have enough spaces yet and so we're going to see if anyone might withdraw of the first round of admits. Um, and then we'll also send out um, um, notices to those that we've denied or students that we've asked to reapply for the following year. Tips for students. Um, Remember, uh, you need the students need to complete the application, not the parent. If the parent does, we're going to send the um, application back and ask the student to fill it out. Again, parents, we're trying to teach a lot about self-sufficiency. So um, the kid, your student needs to want this, um, not you. So please put it back on to uh, your student to be able to complete this. Um, students answer the short an uh, answer questions and the essay questions thoughtfully. Spend a good amount of time on the application. Winter break is a great time. Um, get a friend to proofread your application before you submit it. Don't wait until the uh, end of February deadline, February 4th. Try to get it in before then. Um, and don't wait to get your tribal enrollment or Hawaiian enrollment documents late. Um, for those of you that don't have it, you need to start searching for that documentation now um, and getting copies of it. You also want to start to ask your counselor and teachers for letters of recommendation now. They're right now in the call in the senior college process too, so you have to get on their radar. Some of them might not start to complete it until January because they're going to focus on the seniors, but you should get it in front of them and you should go meet with those counselors in case you haven't formed a relationship with, with them yet. This is a great way to for you to now start that relationship with your counselor. Go in, give them the application, take a flyer in, um, maybe have a little resume ready to say, here's what I'm involved in, um, and then they can help um, to complete the application. And in fact, on some of those questions that we ask, you could answer some of those and tell it to the counselor and they, they might reiterate some of those things. So right now, get focused on the tribal enrollment documents if you don't have them handy and then go make an appointment with a teacher or a counselor now um, bring them a copy of the application and um, start to work with them on when they might get that letter to you probably not until january and then the students we really want to know who you are and where you come from what is it like where you grow up um, what what do you like to do and learn about uh, what are your family and, and cultural commitments? Do you have any special responsibilities at home or in the community? And there's many more questions that we ask you on the essay, and you just have to answer those questions because um, we're just trying to get to know you. Tips for teachers and counselors on the application. Um, uh, we want you to contextualize the school, the size, the rigor, the resources, and especially counselors, if you don't have a school profile that you can send in with the letter of recommendation, if again, you can just give us a little narrative about what is that, um, what is the school like, what is the environment like that the student is coming from. Um, and this is especially great for new schools where we're, um, we're getting an applicant for the first time. Um, work with your students to take the plan or the PSAT for the, the 10th graders and the official SAT or ACT 
for the 11th graders in their spring semester. Um, emphasize in your writing how your student differs from other students. Uh, provide more information that what is, than what is on the transcripts. And in fact, the questions that we ask really don't have anything to do with the transcript. It's about the student. They're learning um, what kind of student they are um, in the class and outside of the class. And then just include information that will help us understand the student's goals, motivations, um, and positive qualities. Information for parents, um, and I know we've got several parents on this webinar. Um, again, make sure your information is up to date and, and we'll, we'll be contacting you throughout the, the process if we're missing information. Uh, parents, tax information is required from all applicants. I'm gonna explain in the next slide. Uh, prepare tax information ahead of time. If you didn't file last year, um, then you, you need to get organized around that uh, in terms of applying to us, although we will take um, the 2012 tax information. Uh, some of you might have 2013 maybe ready by the time of this application. Um, but the breakdown for the application fee and deposit is um, there's a $10 application fee that's non-refundable. Um, the application deposit is $50 out of that $225. Now, the deposit is refundable if the student is not accepted or if they choose to withdraw before the April 15 deadline and we can get another student to take their place. And um, you can submit that $60 total in one check or money order. We don't accept payment by credit cards. Now, why do parents um, submit tax information? Um, financial aid to our program is um, allocated automatically. So I determine based on the taxes we run, um, your EFC essentially, the expected family contribution, and I look at Pell eligibility and start to allocate depending upon where, what the family EFC is. This is similar to what will happen um, for you when your child goes to college. And so then I'll determine um, what tuition amount or airfare amount we can support so it's it's automatic we run it for every single student that way um, some parents um, in the past would misperceive financial aid oftentimes people think that they have to be um, on welfare assistance to qualify for financial aid even to our program and that's not necessarily true so we wanted to make sure that students in need and families in need are getting aid from us to be able to participate in our program uh, we want to expose you to the college financial aid process. Taxes will be used to generate a preliminary FAFSA. So again, we, we need to help parents understand uh, and relieve your anxiety around financial aid. So we're, we're kind of forcing you to do this with us. We're going to develop this preliminary expected family contribution. Um, at the program and that's going to help you to understand how much in college are we really talking about that a family might need to pay for and that can help you on the front end determine which schools are good fits financially to apply to okay and then um, tax information is not used in the selection process um, nor kept at CH all tax information is returned to the family to the applicants um, so we don't keep um, or retain that information for any purposes besides determining financial aid to our program and then running these calculations for um, the EFC and scholarship searches. Now, it's important parents to understand this is where it gets tricky with what whose taxes to submit because family structure affects financial aid. Um, so it can be, sometimes we get a lot of questions on whose taxes do we send in. If a par parents are married, um, what if um, a student lives with both parents but they never married? Um, what about single parents? What about divorced parents? What if um, a parent remarried and there's a step parent that's contributing financially? Um, who's the custodial parent? Who's the non-custodial parent? Is there a legal um, guardian involved? Or is it the grandparents, older siblings, um, aunties and uncles that are actually helping to raise um, a student and kind of take on 
um, that parenting and a lot of times with native families that's not legally done it's just a family hardship that's going on and the student goes to live with one of the um, grandparents siblings aunts and uncles and there's not that documentation so it can get complicated around the tax information so um, we'll talk about who who submits what so if parents guardians are married then you want to submit joint joint tax forms or individual tax forms if filing separately. If parents or guardians are divorced or separated, then you want to submit both if possible. And at the very least, we need tax information from the parent which the student resides with for 51% of the time. That's generally the custodial parent. Um, and if again that custodial parent has remarried, we need um, the step parent tax information too. And then if a student is living with a relative who's not the legal guardian or a parent, then submit the tax information of the person with whom the student lives with most of the time. That person who's, who's kind of taking the financial responsibility for them, even if it's just feeding them, clothing them, having them live with them um, in, their, in their home. And then lastly, numbers don't say it all. Um, uh, any family could be experiencing financial hardship. So there's a part on the application where you can provide a narrative that explains what is going on in the family and why um, you'd like to be considered for tuition support or airfare support. Okay, so after um, a student has been admitted, um, what's the next steps? Uh, we will have you confirm participation. You'll make your tuition payment or accept our scholarship. We'll have you book your airfare through a travel agent. That's generally by mid-April. And then you're going to receive the student um, homework. So this is something on the front end that I want you to be aware of because you've got to do some work um, uh, before you come to our program. Uh, for those that have not, never taken a plan, a PSAT, or an official ACT or SAT test, you're going to have to take one with us because again we need some of that information to to start to do our um our school matches with you um you're going to have have you um uh, complete a brainstorm worksheet and draft a college essay we'll have again the parents complete a preliminary fafsa you'll do a self-assessment that helps um our counselors to better understand who you are and what 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 aspects in a college um, you're looking for. And then we're gonna have you complete a draft of the common application. Um, and then we'll have a wiki site for both the parents and the students to be able to access online to see other program information and resources. Okay, so we're getting to the end of the presentation and um, I want to go over some of these frequently asked questions. So as I'm doing this, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and start sending them um, in the question box and Hillary will compile them for me to answer. But here's some of the common ones. Where do I get an application? Uh, answer, visit our website, go to the apply tab, register click download and then check your download folder. It is not emailed to you. Next question, I'm having trouble opening the application. Uh, it must be opened in Microsoft Word. Um, the application is a fillable document, but also a PDF version of the application is downloadable from the website too. Next question, I'm having trouble downloading the application. Okay. Now we need you to check your in internet browser. Is it up to date? For those of you downloading from a school or sometimes tribal education departments or, um, or, or some of the BIE schools, there's some serious firewalls that some of our schools have to protect our kids, which is good. Um, but they, they may not allow for downloads. So you're gonna have to ask a teacher or a counselor for help. Generally, they get access um, a certain privilege students don't on the campus to download. So contact a teacher or counselor for help or download from somewhere else at home. Um, and if none of those work, then contact us to email you an application. Uh, next question, my GPA is below a 3.0, can I still apply? As long as your grades are showing an upward trend by the time you submit your application in February, um, yes, you can still apply. Likely, though, you'll be waitlisted until we receive updated grades. Okay, so 
you're not ineligible, but I'm looking for that upward trend. Um, and um, but the reality is, is that we may waitlist you till I can see that next um, round of grades to, to see where you're at. Um, I'm a senior in high school or I already graduated from high school but am not in college. Can I still apply? Sorry, um, you're not eligible to apply. We, we only service current 10th and 11th grade high school students. Next question, can I just pay the application fee of $10 and wait to see if I'm admitted to pay the $50 deposit? No, all applicants must pay a total of $60 as part of the application. Your application is incomplete and will not be reviewed. Um, contact us if you're having difficulty paying the full amount. Um, we can work something out with you. Um, and we do not accept credit card payments, so you have to have a check or a money order. Next question, does the applicant need to be an enrolled tribal member? What do Hawaiians provide? Yes, students must provide enrollment documentation from their tribal nation, either state or federally recognized. Native Hawaiians must provide documentation from the Ho'ulu Hawaiian Data Center, Office of Hawaiian Affairs, or the verification from Kamehameha Schools. Um, this is, as I said earlier, important later for your eligibility to scholarships with OHA or Kamehameha or the Hawaiian Community um, uh, Foundation too. If the applicant is not enrolled and if your tribal nation provides a descendant letter, then we will accept that. Okay, but it has to come from the tribal enrollment office. So there are some tribal enrollment offices that will provide decent letters, but it has to come from the tribal nation. Um, so you need to contact your tribal enrollment office. We don't accept birth certificates or the enrollment documents of your parents or your grandparents. Um, at College Horizons, we are not determining who is um, a, a tribal member. That's a sovereign issue of tribal nations. So we're leaving it up to the tribes to, to, determine, to determine that. And um, that's why we don't decide um, uh, in terms of descendancy. Uh, CDIB, Certificate Degree of Indian Blood, does not necessarily mean one is tribally enrolled. We will accept a CDIB only if you also have tribal enrollment documentation. Next question, can I submit my application by fax or scanned as a PDF? No, applications must be received in one envelope with all parts postmarked by February 4th, 2014. PDF and scans um, are not acceptable because transcripts and letters of recommendations are confidential. They're supposed to be, they're supposed to remain sealed in the envelope and not open by the applicant or the parent. So if you did send something in by email, it would be incomplete anyways. Next question. I'm worried I can't pay for the total tuition of 225 and I can't pay for round trip airfare. Maybe around, could be around $500, about probably $1,200 from Hawaii. Should I still apply? Yes, you should still apply. You will face this same circumstance when you apply to college. And we're trying to teach you again about how do you seek out resources around financial aid. So at the time of application, you must pay the $10 application fee and the $50 tuition deposit. So everyone has to pay $60. If you're not selected, again, the $50 deposit will be returned. We raised $40,000 last year to provide students with tuition support and airfare support. Um, and you can apply for that financial assistance in the application. Your parents have to submit tax information and you can also provide a narrative on a hardship letter. Um, lastly though, with this, a scholarship from us does not mean a free ride and it is not an entitlement. College Horizons, we're investing in you. We expect you to participate meaningfully in the program, complete all work assignments, and when you return home to share what you learned with family and classmates. Give a presentation at school to the tribal council, write in the school paper or blog, um, and it's always gracious to send a note uh, back to College Horizons, um, thanking them for that scholarship support. And again, this is gonna be the same in college. Um, a scholarship um, grants 
are, are, we call them sometimes free money, but there's an obligation on your end um, to meet progress, satisfactory progress as a student. It's just not free and it's not an entitlement and it's the same with College Horizons. We do good work. You're going to have um, a great experience. We provide quality excellence and you're going to get a lot out of that $225 coming to our program. Do my parents, um, question, do my parents submit state and federal tax returns? Just the federal tax returns, all of the return, um, schedules, attachments, worksheets, uh, submit a copy, not your originals, redact or cross out social security numbers. A um, couple of other questions. Um, does College Horizons give scholarships to attend college? Um, oops, I think this is in my next slide. Sorry, let me flip over. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, all right, let me jump up here. Is College Horizons a college I can apply to? Answer is no, we're not a college or a university. We're a college access organization that provides pre-college and pre-graduate workshops on the admission process, financial aid process, and we provide strategies on how to be con competitive candidates for con competitive admission, as well as how to be as successful as a native student in college. Does College Horizon give scholarships to attend college? No, College Horizons is not a scholarship organization. We provide financial aid for participants in the program to assist with the tuition fee and airfare. And then if I, a student, attends College Horizons, will I be guaranteed admission to one of the partner schools? No, College Horizons does not guarantee admission to any of our partner college colleges or to any colleges that participate in our college fair. You are admitted on your own merit. Okay, all right, Hillary, I'm going to ask if you have um, received any other questions that we didn't cover. Great, there are a lot of questions, Carmen. So um, our first question is, will we be working on deciding majors or what college would best suit our needs, your needs and has the best program for your major? At the program? Yes, good good question. We will uh, talk about majors and career interests as well. Now, sometimes though with majors, um, the average student will change a major three times in their college career. So there are students that are very specific and have really figured out who they are as a student. They figured out that passion and we're going to coach and mentor them in those um, schools that might be the right fit for them right now academically in terms of a major or a career. But we're also going to have students stay open though to what the best match for them in other areas are. And again, those other areas could be regional. Uh, financial aid is a big one. Um, does that college that you're applying to offer the kind of aid that you qualify for? Um, and then even some things that a, a student might not really think about in terms of weather, uh, the size of the city that they might be going to. Um, there could be family pressure to not travel too far away from home. So does that mean a three hour drive? Does that mean uh, and uh, one plane right away. So we'll, we'll help the students to go over those aspects in addition to the um, major and career interests. Great, and then does the academic teacher reference have to come from a current teacher? Can it be from a teacher of the previous year? Uh, the, it, good question. The reference should, the teacher should come, if you're a 10th grader, it should be from a current 10th grade teacher. If you're an 11th grader, it should come from a current 11th grade teacher. And another question, um, if a student does not receive scholarships, the total cost would be 2000 is that correct? No, 225 no. So the total cost, I put that in there, sorry if I confused you. Um, my point is that um, to host a student on a campus for six days with uh, linen, meals, overnight, all of that, it costs $2,000. Um, but we're only asking families to pay $225. So uh, if a student does not receive any aid from College Horizons, then the total tuition cost is $225. Thanks for that question. And will the experience be fun too? It sounds like pure work. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is good question. It is a lot of work, but it is a lot of fun. And you know, um, uh, we'll we'll probably try to do another Google Hangout with some of our alumni that attended the program last year, so that you can see that. Because yeah, I'm giving you the nuts and bolts of applying. Um, but no, we have a lot of fun, and um, we are crying at the end when we're leaving each other, the faculty and the students, and on our Facebook page, um, you know, you might see a little bit in there, but we also have group pages, though, that are only open to participants in the program to continue uh, to foster relationships among our alumni and the faculty, and it's fun to see that in there. Um, but no, we, we do have um, a good bit of fun, but it's, it's equal to the hard work, and I think that that's why it ends up paying off in the end, is that everybody is working hard, and we're all encouraging each other, um, and we're, we're sharing in our success together at the end once we complete all of our projects together. Great, and um, this one is, is the form for the teacher and counselor recommendation included in the application, or do we have to get that separately? No, everything is in one application, and uh, in the application, the different parts in here are the actual application, uh, the short answer questions, the personal essay questions, um, uh, the information for parents on tax information and financial. There's actually waivers, three waivers um, that parents and students have to sign. Um, and then the counselor and teacher recommendation are in the application as well. So a student could either send the whole application to that um, teacher um, and counselor, or they can just print them out and hand that to the teacher and counselor. And the next question is, my son is a sophomore this year. Can he attend in the summer of 2015? Um, he would be entering his senior year in, in September. If he can attend in 2015, would it be better to attend then instead of this summer of 2014? Yeah, good question. Um, so he would be eligible, right, because he would be a junior next year for the, for the 2015 program. Um, it is going to be competitive um, uh, for this coming year, and, and I would say... Um, it depends upon both if Dartmouth might be one of those top schools that he wants to explore because we're going to be on that campus. Um, and if you also feel that he's getting some good college counseling um, at his current school, then um, he might be great to just um, wait till the following year. So um, that's a hard one. And sometimes, um, um, Sometimes it also just depends upon where that student is at in their maturity, too, because there can be a big growth between um, a sophomore student and a junior student as well. Next question is, is the application fee of $60 in addition to the $225 cost? So, um, no, the... The $60 is $10 of the application fee, which is non-refundable, and then $50 is a deposit uh, towards that $225. Great. And then the next one is, regarding the 3.0 requirement, I saw that applies to core classes. Does this, is this the same if all my child's core classes are at the AP level? Um, well, the, the AP, no, the AP classes would be, con I would consider those um, core classes uh, because of the rigor of that. So I wouldn't consider them an elective, elective type of class with respect to the transcript. Okay, and then if my child will need to apply for financial aid to college, but not necessarily for the CH program, I assume this will not be held against her. That's the question. Say that again. Uh, if if my student is applying for uh, college financial aid, but we will not require it for the CH uh, application itself, um, will this be held against her? Uh, no, but but through our process, they're going to be um, running through the process of applying to, for financial aid. So. Um, no, nothing will be held against her, but you can't exempt yourself. You can't, the parent cannot 
not submit tax information. Uh, there are certain circumstances um, where um, where families um, or where tribal nations um, are paying for everything um, and it's in the rare case that we have some students that might um, receive compensation from their tribal nations where they'll never qualify for financial aid and I'll have conversations with those parents about their taxes but that's very rare um, so for this parent if their child is going to apply potentially to um, college for financial aid you're going to want to run through the process with us and please define core GPA. What if my cumulative core per my high school is currently 2.9 with an upward trend um, and should be 3.0 by the end of the semester? Should I not apply in January if I don't make the core GPA by end of semester? Uh, no, you want to if you're going to, if the semester, and I don't know when the semester ends for this student, but if it's by the time of application in February, then you would be eligible to apply. Um, and I would, I would rather err on the side of applying when you're close to it. Um, I'm not trying to make any student jump through hoops just in case, but I also think that if, if you want this and you're, you're, you're hungry for this, then you, you're going to take those steps with us to apply. Um, and I'd be interested in that type of hunger on the application as well. Um, so as long as they're in that upward trend in the core by application time, I would say I would say yes to apply. And what if the transcripts, including the current first semester grades, cannot be given to the student by February 4 due to the semester ending at the very end of January? Okay, and that would be the counselor should be submitting that information to us. So in the counselor's letter, uh, generally most uh, counselors will submit whatever grades they have to that date, and then they will say, and then the next grades will be released at this point. So that would make a student eligible in terms of um, the processing. And in fact, we'll then follow up with the counselor um, and the student to have them fax. It's one of the, the only time we give our fax number out is when we are collecting missing information. So you won't find our fax information published anywhere. So for that student, um, the counselor should be explaining that in their letter of recommendation and then they should be uh, giving us the grades to do that point. Okay, and I, I think we've got time for about two more questions. Um, one last one is um, confusion about the tribal enrollment part. Um, please clarify if you can. May non enrolled descendant students apply to CH? Only if they get a descendancy letter from that tribal enrollment office. So we do not accept descendants who might submit to us their parent or their grandparent um, tribal documentation or birth certificates. Um, some tribes provide descendancy letters um, that's on the actual tribe's um, letterhead that says this, we can verify that this person's parent or grandparent um, is an enrolled tribal member, but this person is not eligible but is a descendant. Um, that as long as it's coming from the tribal nation, um, but, but that's the only circumstances. Great. And then um, will Stanford be a host in 2015? Yes, Stanford will be a host in 2015 along with Bowdoin College up in Maine. So we've got um, two programs secured for the 2015 program already. Great. And then the rest of the questions we'll um, go ahead and answer by email. Um, it would probably be easiest if you just sent them to the email address on the screen, but I do have a copy of them as well. Um, from one, the ones that you've submitted. So if I wasn't able to pose your question to Carmen, um, please feel free to follow up with me if you don't receive an email back um, in the next hour or so. Um, great, that's it, Carmen. Okay, thank you everyone and
uh, we look forward to your application. Again, be in touch if you have any other questions, and we're excited to work with you this coming year. Follow us on Facebook. We post some things um, on there for any student to access, and that's also true for parents. Um, many um, folks who don't have a Facebook account, you don't have to have a Facebook account uh, to view our Facebook page so you can see the resources, scholarship, reminders on testing that we send out um, to our students and to the public. So I do encourage you um, to look that up as one of our resources. Um, and if you've got any questions, again, be in touch with us. And um, we're excited to kick off our application season. Thank you all for attending.